Welcome to Natural 2, which is the show where we discuss nerdy and strange tabletop role-playing game questions, advice, topics, and all that fun stuff. I am Nathan, the partner in crime for today, and I guess for every day, is James. What are we discussing today, sir? Today we are talking about burnout. Uh, primarily, I think DMs are the ones that have to contend with burnout, but it's possible to get burnt out as a player too. But we're going to talk about what it means to us to be burnt out and what you can try to do about it. I'm pretty interested to actually hear what you have to say about player burnout because, you know, me being the forever, the forever DM of this situation, I've never played long enough to have player burnout. So I'm interested what that might look like because it's not something I am familiar with. Why don't we talk about what it means to be burnout? All right. Well, you want to give us a go then, sir? Burnout. I'm not going to define burnout. It's fatigue, mm -hmm. right? It, mm -hmm. You know, we, we understand what it means to be burnt out. In my unscientific opinion, there are three kinds or causes of burnout when we're talking about tabletop gaming, tabletop role playing. The first is the most obvious in that you're just you're tired. You've been you've been at it a while and you've run out of juice. And I think this is my lukewarm take that this is what everybody assumes is happening, but it's the least common expression of burnout. I think that it's a minority of cases where this is actually what's happening for you. Uh, what I think is much, much more likely is the second form of burnout in my mind, which is that there's something about your game or your group with which you are dissatisfied, but you don't want to admit it or you're not engaging with it or, or facing it. Whether that is the campaign is not going like you thought, or your favorite NPC got killed before they could get two sentences out, or you've got a player that is being a dingus and you don't know how to make them stop. And that, not your campaign, not D&D, that is what you are tired of. That is what is making you burnt out. Uh, yeah. In which case, um, what you would do about that is very different than what you would do if you're just generally, generically tired. A lot of people talk about, like, you know, feeling unmotivated to create the next thing or flesh out this faction or something of that sort. And I think that is something that is like applies to the little categories that you put forth is it's not always that your creative well is tapped out or that you're just tired of creating things. I think that's a very rare uh, situation to find yourself in. It probably does come from your creations not being enjoyed or appreciated in some way, shape or form, whether it is a player that is you know not interacting with something right or it is a DM that's not understanding a certain part of your backstory or like a concept of your character that you want to showcase it's I, I feel this is my assumption it's not any sort of scientific point as you said that it isn't the actual act of creativity it is how it is being received that burns you out or causes burnout cause or the third form of burnout in my list is an external factor that has nothing to do with your game mm -hmm. And it is sapping your energy or it is seeping into your game night. That is the toughest nut to crack of all because it could be anything. Mm -hmm. And this is a tabletop talk show, not a general advice talk show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll talk about that much more in the context of this video other than if you need to, you need to be honest with yourself or do some introspection and uh, you know, realize if and when that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what you do about it, go, f you just have to go from there. It depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just be open to the possibility that your burnout is not actually about being tired of your game. There are times, and this is coming from a DM, cause again, I'm not an avid player or have enough experience in that regard to speak to it, where if you're running a long-term campaign or you're running as the DM for your group for a long period of time. There are going to be weeks or months or however often you play where you do not feel excited to sit down and play or you don't feel motivated during your downtime to create the maps or to prep the adventure or whatever needs to be done. 
and this could be for an in-game reason or an out-of-game reason or whatever, if it is a temporary problem where, you know, you're just having a bad week or, you know, a bad month or something happened earlier that day, I think the correct answer is to just suck it up, deal with it, and play that session out. Because the alternative or the issue you put forward by skipping a session or changing your plans or doing some other solution to the problem starts creating inconsistencies in your game. And if your game is like most people or most groups, if you miss a week, miss two weeks, go on hiatus, that game is probably never going to happen. It's probably never going to get picked back up. It's going to crash and burn. People are going to get disinterested. So if you are the DM and you are facing burnout, because I have had this many a times in the year and a half that we've been playing, there's multiple sessions that I did not want to sit down and play, but I knew if I missed a week, it was going to cause problems, so I just sat down and played it. And ultimately, you know, I ended up having fun and feeling better about it. Some of the issues that I felt were going to be, you know, super impactful were rather mediocre. So there are times to suck it up and deal with it. The caveat I would place on that where it wraps back around to what we were talking about. If there is a prolonged issue, either in game or out of game, such as, you know, your whole interest in the hobby has shifted or your life has become much too busy to allow you to stay interested in this. That's where burnout needs to be faced or handled in a different way, where perhaps you have to rethink your approach to the hobby as a whole, or maybe you have to have a long discussion with your group about where you're at and what's been going on and different frustrations you've had. That is when you can't just power through it. And it's almost probably a negative thing to attempt to sit there and power through it. I'll link our communication video so that you can have that as a reference for ways to handle different problems that pop up. But yes, that that's my hot take that I think a lot, a lot of people put forth as advice is sometimes just deal with it and do it for the group. Being DM is, <clears throat> it's the hottest seat at the table. I'm in favor of people trying to DM. I, I think that the hobby needs all the DMs it can get. Uh, but you do need to know that it is a commitment. And there are going to be sessions where the the commitment that you have made to the group is the main thing that keeps you moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is one of the things that I'm a big proponent of when it comes to all of these sort of out of game, out of character issues, whether it's scheduling or, or bird out or out of character conflicts or what have you is remembering that as a player too, you have made an, uh, an agreement, maybe it's an unspoken agreement, but an agreement, a social contract, if you will, mm-hmm. With everybody else around that table. And I think that you could copy and paste this clip to a video that we might make about like scheduling problems and people flaking and canceling and things like that, which seems to happen so much, is respecting that agreement, respecting that commitment to that group, understanding that, yeah, it's a game and it's fun, it's whatever, but it's still something that you have agreed to do. And people are scheduling and they're setting aside time and they might be telling other people in their lives, I can't that night, Mm -hmm. you know? So just remember that when it comes to being tired or being burnt out. And having said that, just to add on to what else, uh, the rest that you included, know yourself Mm -hmm. uh, and try to understand whether it's uh, just something that you need to grunt through uh, or if it is a bigger problem if you're going to take a break like you said uh, and that this really only works if you're talking about generic fatigue and that's one of the reasons why I highlighted why Mm -hmm. I think that that is actually the least common cause or the least common problem if you've decided that you need a break set an end date set a date when you're going to come back Mm -hmm. because if you just say We're going to take a break for a few weeks. We're going on hiatus. I just need time to sort things out and go get a back rub and uh, get a mani-pedi and just not think about D&D for a while. Your game's over. Chances are you just killed it. Uh, Because if you don't schedule a time to come back and people get off that rhythm, it's going to be difficult to get everybody on the same page again, in my experience. 
Uh, so set a date to come back so that you can try to avoid the campaign falling apart because suddenly you're trying to get people on Discord or on the phone. Hey, you want to play this weekend? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't know when we were going to come back, so I've, I'm going to Grandma's house that weekend, and then the next week it's going to be something else and something else and something else. So plan your break. In fear of this becoming the uh, the hiatus conversation and how to kill your campaign, I'm going to try and swivel us back towards actual burnout and maybe potentially other ways to face it besides just powering through it. This might even fall into more of like a your general inspiration for creativity kind of conversation, but whenever I find that I like don't want to do a particular piece of prep or I don't want to answer some player's question or um, I'm tired of figuring out the mechanics of how dwarves live underground and how they tell time and are their years different and, you know, things that get almost like mundane or trivial to an extent, start just doing certain things you enjoy like if you enjoy map making just make some random maps or if you enjoy listening to other people's lore then put on some like 40k lore and just listen to some weird shit that some other people have come up with like if you are finding yourself creatively burnt out forcing yourself through it is going to be incredibly difficult and the way that i usually handle that is i escape from it get a little bit of i don't know stimulus of other people's creativity and then come back to face the problem with the understanding that the problem is going to get solved before it's needed in the game. But you don't have to do it right then and there. You can always find a different time to do that. So, yeah, looking for inspiration is my next point too. Uh, play play games or watch movies or TV shows that you know get those juices flowing, uh, or or read your favorite fantasy novels uh that have some overlap with your with the subject matter of your campaign i think that that could also be another whole episode of mm -hmm. sources of inspiration but uh that that could get you thinking about something or watching your favorite D, &D youtubers mm -hmm. here we are uh <laughs> that will so get inspirational you, yeah that will get you thinking about things you can add or change that might help you overcome dissatisfaction or, or the funk that you are in in terms of getting past what you're stuck on. One uh, aspect that we mentioned earlier that I think I, I forgot to kind of, I don't know, indulge in a little bit is I feel like, because again, whenever we do uh, videos like this, I look up a lot of like Reddit posts and videos and forum posts about like this particular problem. And a lot of the things that I saw people citing, at least from the DM perspective, is feeling like they are it's an uphill battle that they're creating all this content and they're working to do all this stuff it's not appropriately appreciated by their players and i don't really know if there is a solution to this of course you can start feedback fishing is what i usually call it where you start like asking questions or probing little things or trying to get the players to not compliment you but at least have some reaction to something that you have done and when you do that and get no response or an inadequate response, however you want to frame that, that is pretty demoralizing because I think that the fuel that most DMs use to power forward is the excitement from their players. And unless you have the perfect group, there are going to be weeks or months or story arcs or quests that the players just aren't as excited about or they have stuff going on in their personal lives and they forget to, you know, pump the DM's tires up or, you know, mention something in the, the group chat or whatever. So if I had to give a little bit of advice from a DM to the players that watch this video, if you like your game, even if you've been playing for 12 years and you know the guy and he's like your brother-in-law and you tell him you love the game all the time, compliment a map, tell him you like to hand out, you know, something, anything, any little tidbit, any little small mention of like a, a respect of the effort goes a long way and as me speaking as the dm of our game that's there's so many times where i'm like i don't want to do this thing and then someone's like here's something i enjoy and i'm like i'll do that thing right now try to remember that if you're a player you're constantly getting feedback mm -hmm. you're constantly getting signs and signals uh of how you are doing uh, there's a steady stream of rewards, whether it's treasure or the dead bodies of your enemies or uh, new NPC allies to interact with or what have you, or or level ups, you know? 
level levels up level ups <laughs> sure tell me which one it is in the comments <laughs> you're constantly getting rewarded so think about once in a while how your dm gets rewarded and if there's something that you can do to provide that you mentioned earlier player burnout and i'm curious what that looks like and how you would potentially solve it being disinterested in your character not caring whether they survive uh throwing them at throwing them at at unreasonable situations uh because you don't care what the outcome is mm -hmm. um or just a general lack of engagement with the campaign is the is there something about the character that isn't going the way that I thought it would. It, did I, am I not actually having that much fun with this class uh, or uh, ancestry or whatever? I thought that this thing that I built my character for was going to be a bigger deal than it turned out to be in this campaign. I, my favorite enemy is undead, but we only fight goblinoids. If that's the case, and you might have to think about it because that, you know it may not be that obvious at first. Uh, but if something like that is the case, then talk to your DM and f you can figure out, is it something I can change about my character or do I just need a new one? Um, and being open to a change of character uh, in order to address that issue, uh, if that's what's going on. Uh, it could also be a ruling from the DM that you don't agree with, but that has deflated you in some way. There again, uh, all you can do is sort of talk to the DM about it. Again, that communication video, there was a post on Reddit just this morning because I was doing something very similar in my research. Someone had a whole class feature taken away because the DM wanted that to be a thing in his game world, but he didn't tell anybody till it came up. That's the uh, appropriate way of handling that. Uh, yeah. Uh, slash sarcasm. Um, that is deflating. That will make that character less fun to play. That will lead to fatigue and burnout over time. Uh, and so I'm not, I can't take credit for the solutions that were suggested, but I do agree with them that maybe that can be swapped out for another ability uh, or maybe a whole new character is in order. As a player, you may not be jiving with the group dynamic. You maybe wanted Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but you're around the table with a bunch of grognards that really take combat super seriously uh, and play very effective characters. And meanwhile, you rolled some gnome clown. Three kobolds uh, in a trench coat. Yeah, three kobolds in a trench coat. In that case, very similar. You need to examine, like, can I have fun if I align myself with the with the rest of the group or do i need something different that could be as simple as talking to the group about how you would like to see things going maybe maybe you can get a story arc or a quest that more lines up with your style uh or you may have to think about another group and that's a last resort but it is sometimes what needs to happen and that's a, as a player or even as a DM, you know, the answer might be at the end of the day to hand over the reins or uh, to find a group that does match. But that's more, there's more on that in our communication video. This doesn't specifically apply to burnout, but it is core to the DM player relationship, in my opinion. Your DM should be as invested and as excited about your character as you. Obviously, you know, if there's going to be one over the other, the player should be more excited than the DM. But there should at least be a similarness in the level of excitement. There are so many times where I've wanted to like dig more into a character or like figure out how they think or like refer back to some part of their backstory or why they handle a situation the way they did. And when a player just goes, eh, it felt right, it's like, okay, I and mean, that's fine. But it would be so much more interesting to me because I'm here as like a fan of the game, as a fan of all of the players' creativity of like, but why? But, but there's more, there's more there. And so if you are feeling player burnout in the way that you described, don't be afraid to 
talk to your DM about like maybe there's a, a perspective that you're missing or there is a different character that you could be playing or there is an aspect of your character that the DM doesn't understand. You know, just not too long ago, me and James had a fairly lengthy conversation that his identity as a character and my understanding as the character are not perfectly aligned and there's ways to adjust that and grow and get more in line with that as a, a duo or as a dungeon master and a player. So if that's what's needed to fix your burnout, and if that's the source of the burnout, that's the problem. That's that's the the gate to your gateway to your solution right there. So I don't want to keep banging the communication drum, <laughs> but there's a reason why <laughs> we recorded it and have joked and not joked about linking it somewhere in every other video. We really need like a little like you know those old TV banners that come out. It's like how I met your mother on today at eight. There should be like a little like communication like yeah. bumbling slide that comes out. How hard are those to do? That may be what we have to do. We'll, we'll look into that. <laughs> I'll get my production guy on it. I could talk about D and D all day. That's why we started recording <laughs> it. But I think that that's what I've got on the subject of burnout and fatigue. In summary, make sure you understand what it is you're tired of because that's going to change how you deal with it. And uh, if if it's a problem with the game itself, taking a break is not going to solve it. And if anything, it might make it worse, because you'll come back from your break and think, I don't feel better. Why don't I feel better? I must hate mm -hmm. D&D. That's one thing that I feel like is worth mentioning, is certainly you can be critical of yourself. God knows I am. But don't blame yourself all the time. Don't be so negative and problematic for yourself. Because if you stand in the way of your enjoyment and your success, then you're never going to get over the burnout if you feel like no matter what you do or you know what different programs and maps and articles and advice videos you watch, you just can't figure out a solution. Don't be so ready to take all that burden upon yourself. There are certainly things you can do to improve or adjust or attempt to reach out, but defeating yourself before getting to a solution is just gonna leave you ultimately defeated and burnt out. It's never going to go quite like you imagine in your head. In D&D. &D. Uh, and, I, and I think that that's good to remember as a player too, because mm -hmm. that's something I come up against is I, <laughs> set a scene for my character and, and how, what I'm going to do in it. And then it never comes up. It never happens. The situation is always going to be fluid and it's always going to be even just slightly different, if not totally different from what you expect or imagine or prepared for. Uh, no plan survives contact with the enemy or the players. Well, I think that's all that I have, sir. Same here. So on, on that note, like, subscribe, do it. Just do it. You need the intimidation uh, check. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, we've tried persuasion for three videos in a row. And that, uh, leave comments. Uh, tell us why you think that we're dumb. Uh, or why you think that we're great. And what else you'd like to hear us go on and on about and uh, i'll do our little plug of checking out our campaign that we run is millieth adventures going for a year and a half now and coming up on a special event that i will not spoil we also have other content like map making videos and then other natural two conversations around a multitude of topics but that's all that i have so until next time <laughs>